Hello everyone, welcome to the Flight Sim Deck and welcome to Phoenix Sky Harbor International Airport. Today we'll be doing SkyWest Airlines flight number 5802, also United Express, in the new Aerosoft CRJ700. And this will be a flight out to Denver, Colorado, over to Denver International Airport. And Here's the brand new plane, uh, looks beautiful on the outside and the inside. It took a long time for this to come out, I think they were in development of this for about 8 years and it is finally out and in the hands of us flight simmers and it couldn't be a better time for it to come out. Summertime, got a lot of free time to fly around and um, that is what we're going to do here today. So this is skyvector.com and you can use this for all of your flight planning, it's what I like to use to get a little bit of little more realism out of it and we're just going to zoom in here and I'll show you the route that we'll be doing today so just plan this off uh, flight aware real quick to do uh, my little test flight here and this is the way we're gonna be going going by the Dexter waypoint and then on up here to the east and then heading north and on in to Denver which will be uh, approaching one of the runways from the 3-4 side. Not sure which one yet, but that uh, seems to be the winds at the moment. And uh, it shouldn't change with this little over an hour long flight. So I think it's uh, safe to say that's what we'll be coming in through. So, with all that, uh, we're going to, for the very first time ever on the Flight Simulator channel, power up the CRJ. Now we're going to tune ATIS and uh, see what our departure will be today. Alright, so this is going to be from Phoenix to Denver, as I said before. This airplane has an extremely loud ground power unit, and um, I was speaking to uh, one of my fellow team members on FS Elite, and uh, he says the ground power unit is uh, actually pretty loud in real life, so they uh, seem to have gotten that right for this aircraft. Getting our departure plugged in now. And now it's on to the pushback. We're going to complete the pushback first, and then we'll start the engines up, uh, just in case I uh, screw anything up with starting them up. I'd rather do it after the push. All right, pushback is complete. We're going to start the right engine, so you turn the ignition on, and then um, I was trying to figure out how to actually move this throttle arm up. You have to move it up. Um, and then flick the red lever, but I couldn't figure out how to get it unlocked, so what I'm going to actually end up doing, I think I'll use the reverse thrust button on my SciTech quadrant to pop it up out of, out of that lock. There we go. There's probably a button for it, I'm not sure what it is, but I just you hit the reverse thrust button and that pops it out of, the, out of the lock and now we can start it up. I 
Now you'll see on the uh, PFD there in yellow all the um, list of things and uh, don't worry about that prior to starting the engine a lot of that will disappear uh, once you do start uh, once the second engine comes on. All right, just got a few more things to turn on. First one is going to be the odd damper. And that light has extinguished. And we're all good in that area. Now, I accidentally hit the uh, generator one button, turned it off, kind of killed the power for a second, so it does wipe the FMC when you do that, so I had to reprogram the FMC uh, prior to taxi here, so make sure you uh, do not do that. And we're going to be taxiing over to runway 7 left, where we'll be flying our departure. Taxi in kind of fast right now, but there's uh, no one else but us. I'm using Ultimate Traffic Live, but I actually turned it off right now because I was getting poor frames per second, and I turned that off along with the dynamic lighting, so I'm not sure actually which one was the culprit to the frames. Okay, we are approaching the end of the taxiway and turning on to seven left where we're gonna hold short go over our checklist and uh, get everything sorted out that we need to do on the departure this is um, if I didn't say before my very first flight with it I uh, just wanted to make a video out of it and so I'm still learning Actually, never flown the CRJ before, except in FSX, but that was a very watered down version of a CRJ. And uh, this is the first complex one I've flown. And I found with actually learning, um, I've learned all sorts of aircraft in the last year, and I found that um, they all kind of become the same. You really learn, you know, it's just learning where each of the switches are. A lot of them have the same procedures to start. And, uh, and fly and all sorts of things like that. So all right, we're ready to go. We're gonna get the clock set. And this is going to be our departure. It's gonna be the Yotes 5, which will take us up north to Denver. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure the landing lights are on. They already are. They don't show up without dynamic lighting, so it doesn't really matter anyway, but there we go. Alright, we're going to line up, and we're on our way out.
one rotate. Positive climb, gear up. Pretty smooth so far. It's a smooth feeling playing a taxi smooth and on the rotate it was it was nice and smooth, so that's good news. We're gonna hand fly just for a little bit, just wanna get the feel for it for a couple of minutes. And then we'll let the autopilot do its thing. Flaps are up. I must have the pitch programmed incorrectly because the flight director is way up there at 30 degrees, which we're not going to pitch for that, as I think we would stall the aircraft, most definitely. So we have the autopilot on, and it's set to navigation, and it should follow the route now. And it's starting to make the turn right around, right around where it should. So I think it's grabbed it. As we say goodbye to Arizona. Going up to flight level 350 today. Well, it looks good, except it's just a little bit, um, some storms close to Denver, but nothing too major. Looking forward to getting familiar with this plane. So far, so good. We're at our cruise, and you just gotta watch your speeds when um, when it cruises, because it can kind of fluctuate.
All right, so we're going to get ready for our descent in just a moment. Uh, it's just going to be a, a couple more minutes before we do so. But yeah, so far no problems with this plane at all. Um, if you're a CRJ fan, I, I think I recommend definitely getting it. They're only going to improve it from here on out with updates and such, but I haven't run into anything really weird. Um, it's kind of hard to tell what's a bug and what isn't when you're new to an aircraft because um, you don't know if uh, it's just a mistake you made or if it's something wrong with the aircraft, so I, I really can't tell you, but um, so far everything's operating well. I'm actually surprised I've picked it up this successfully um, on the first try, but uh, keep our fingers crossed that it stays that way. But like I said, I've been learning so many aircraft lately that it's, just, it's, it's getting easier and easier to learn new ones um, once you've seen many different systems and how things work. Uh, it just gets a little easier. But uh, this aircraft is pretty much it's pretty straightforward. Everything makes sense with it, with how the systems operate. We're gonna go ahead and uh, get the pitch adjusted. Uh, it's gonna be the peak three arrival that we'll be doing through the mountains today. Going down through a little bit of clouds. First, we're gonna go down to flight level 270, then on down to 17,000, down to nine, and then to seven where we'll be entering the glide slope. Going to do an approach into 3-4 right today. Slowly but surely making our way down. Hazy off in the distance, and um, we have to go through some clouds coming ahead. The soupiest of the soup. Which is nice. Lately, I haven't had to deal with them much. For clouds, so it's nice to see some. I'm still not using any cloud add-ons at the moment. No NVTX, no Rex. This is just default clouds with uh, Active Sky making the uh, forming the weather for us. Now we're in the clouds looks great out there. Having a little bit of lightning.
We've got about 10,000 feet to go. Next, I'd like to do a night flight with this aircraft. Can't wait till Warbex releases a lot of the sceneries. You know, kind of just got Innsbruck and then version 4 came out and now no more Innsbruck and I'd like to be doing flights around that part of the world as well as some of the other ones I had recently picked up. So hope they come out very soon. I'm going to do some more flights of those. Alright, so we're on our approach. I actually experienced a sim crash. Um, luckily I had a save point at about 14,000 feet. I was able to load it back in, but I did have to reprogram the FMC with our arrival, but uh, seems to be working fine. Um, could have been anything. I don't think it has anything to do with the CRJ um, crashes in prepared are a uh, normal thing for me lately. Uh, not sure what's causing it, but happens in uh, all sorts of situations, and I got a lot of things to turn off to try to narrow it down. So um, let's just hope we're able to complete the flight from here. I hate having to do it that way, but uh, sometimes that's just how it goes in the flight sim world. Um, I actually regret the uh, day in the life of the of a flight simmer, the little short film I made on the channel, last video before this one, I actually regret not ending it with like an out of memory error or a, uh, a crash. That would have been really funny. Um, but, uh, you know, maybe next time when I do something like that. So, on our way in 2, 3, 4, right, which is closer to the terminals. So glad we're doing that runway. And we're just hand flying it now. On a vector. Like I said, it uh, hand flies very easily. Trim is is nice and smooth. Everything's really smooth with it. And put the gear down and start configuring the flaps for landing. I'm assuming this aircraft has a minimums call out. But I'm not sure where to add that. Still got a lot to learn. See the pappy lights now? This runway is tucked back a little further than 3 4 left. So, uh, but it's coming into sight more now.
1,000. One hundred, fifty, forty, thirty, twenty, ten. So we're going to put the flaps up, exit right here, and I can't wait to take a look at the replay. We're going to get onto the taxiway on the right, and I'll have that up for you in just a moment. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that little replay we had there. So I don't really know what gate we're going to park at. don't have ultimate traffic on now. Or actually it is on. It just doesn't have as many planes uh, populating right now. So I'm just going to park at a random gate. It doesn't really matter. So we'll just go up here, park on the left, shut it down, and call it a day. Probably do some more VR flying vids. Maybe I'll check out this aircraft in VR and see how that is. Nice, so the gate is straight ahead. It's cool to see the puddles on the ground here in Denver. They always do a flight beam always does a great job with the detail.
and we'll stop right here and put the parking brake on. I don't know if I need to actually move the red levers there. I think that's actually just for starting it. I think you just need to move the throttles back. But either way, the engines are turned off. And we're here at the gate and deboarding. So, everybody, I want to thank you for joining along on this video. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I'm looking forward to many more with the CRJ. Take care, guys.